What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to uh, Kovacs Corner. We're out here with another React video. I've been su I've been following Summoning Salt for a hot minute now. Uh, I like the history of world record progressions that he ends up doing. You take a look at his channel. He's a pretty big channel. He has 1.85 million. I'm pretty sure a good majority of everybody has seen what he's put out with the world progression and stuff like that especially when it came down to hold on where is it videos where is it dun, 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 dun. it was the pokemon world yeah, there you go world record progression for the pokemon so what we're checking out is uh the history of super mario bros most infamous level world world four level two so we're about to get into it. All credibility goes to Summoning Assault. Thank him. Leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? For doing the work for us. And that we're able to react to it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Feel free to hit me up on any one of my other social media platforms down in the description below. Let's get it. This is stage 4-2 in the original Super Mario Bros. Also, the reason why I want to watch this, I want to see what it is i know when you get to the second level when you run through there's like a glitch that you can do and i'm trying to actually accomplish that as i've been playing the super mario games because we've been playing super mario and i wouldn't mind uh playing the classic super mario it doesn't really look that menacing an area at the start with no floor sure and an elevator gap just after and as soon as you enter 4-2 you're able to exit it Boom. If you hit these blocks to reveal this vine, you can climb up it and you'll be above ground. And there you can warp to either world 6, 7, or 8. So that's that's the warp world there that you're able to get to. Nice. This stage has seemed so pivotal to speedrunners who have been trying to beat Super Mario Bros. as fast as possible for years. And then if you, it's if you bypass that and you go along the top, it'll just take you to world 5. Gateway to world 8, arguably the most dangerous part of the game, so this is a level that's going to make or break your speedrun. But as short and simple as this level may seem, little do most people know that 4-2 has caused more pain and agony than just about any other level in the game. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh. So there's like three or four different things that go with this level all together. And I'm pretty sure he's going to break down all of them. If not, I'm going to point out a couple things that like I, I know about. Let's check it out. Yeah. Oh. Most infamous level reach help. Oh, nice. April 2004. This is going Welcome back, Welcome to man. the mid-2000s. This is when the first Super Mario Bros. speedruns were completed. Runners such as Scott Kessler and Trevor Sagan were the pioneers. And they Five knew that 4-2 is a simple level Five with a simple goal. Run through it, climb up the vine, and warp to World 8. Doing that quickly wasn't too hard. Doing it as fast as humanly possible, on the other hand, definitely was. It was obvious to most back then that the start of 4-2 is really straightforward. You jump across this gap, stomp on So right here, right here, if you were to run, you could like jump and bump right in here and it'll take you through. On a Goomba, and then continue jumping forward until you're on the platform. Then you jump off the platform to hit the block that makes the warp zone vine appear. That's a pivotal, this is pivotal where really tough. moment. You have to tap left to slow down to nearly a stop, and then jump to reveal this invisible block. Then you tap left again just enough to completely stop, landing just to the right of the invisible block you revealed. Finally, you jump on top of the block, onto the top platform, and onto the vine. Doing this in real time at full speed requires a ton of precision, and boom, it took runners boom. quite a bit of time to get good at it. This is Scott Kessler's 510 from April 2004. As you can see, he hesitated a bit while climbing on the blocks. Seen that. through the vine by accident when he was trying to climb up onto it. Yeah, the hidden text seconds. in Super Mario Bros. is a little bit weird at times. But runners Those eventually got better seconds. at this section. In Trevor Sagan's 507 from a few months later, you can see that he was able to get a smoother climb to the vine, ultimately ending the section with a 376 on the timer, nice. which counts down from 400 when you start the level. 
and when he improved his run to a 506 a few weeks later, he once again improved 4 2, getting it smoother than ever before with a 3. He kind of glitched there. You see that? Hold on, let's see. Later, he once again improved 4 2. Right there. He ended up turning too soon. Getting it smoother than ever before with a 377 on the timer. So alright, speedrunners have established a way of getting through 4-2 very quickly. And given how short the level was, you might wonder what else could possibly be found for speedrunners to go through the level quicker. After all, you are already going directly to the warp zone as fast as you could. Wait until he gets into the warp pipes, because there's like a whole uh, frame rate section that's about to pop up. But if there's one thing you should never do, it's doubt the ability of speedrunners to figure out something even faster. The wrong warp. When you're playing through Super Mario Bros, you're occasionally able to leave the screen you're on to enter another screen. Sometimes this other screen is an underground coin cache, sometimes it's a bonus section, and sometimes it's a warp zone. Every time you can exit the screen you're on to access one of these zones, be it a pipe, a vine, or whatever, I'll be referring to as an exit zone. Now, 4-2 is a little bit unique. Almost immediately after beginning the level, it has two of these exit zones back to back. That's a fact. The first one is the vine that you take to the warp zone, and the second one is this pipe this a few one. blocks down that takes you to an underground room with coins. But there's a catch. The game can only have one of these zones loaded at the same time. It can't say, if you go up the vine you go here, but if you go down the pipe you'll go here. So the way the game works around that is by changing what the one destination is depending on how far the screen is scrolled. For example, if you're standing here and manage to activate an exit zone in some way, the game will send you to the above ground warp zone. Now when we move forward, closer to the pipe, suddenly the next zone gets loaded. So if you manage to activate an exit zone then, you'll go to the underground section. What this means is that if you're somehow able to get into this pipe while the game still has the warp zone loaded as the exit zone destination, this. the game will send you to the warp zone without playing the long climbing the vine cutscene that it normally does. The only it's a frame perfect movement that you have to get with this, and it's it's intense, man. This is so crazy. I've seen uh, the world record progression when I was watching this. Oh man, I forget who it was, but he was he kept doing the level over and over and over and over again, trying to get that time, and it was crazy, man. The only known way to do this is by moving Mario closer to the right side of the screen. The game thinks Mario is farther back than he actually is, so it loads the exit zone destination from where the screen position is. In this case, it's the warp zone. So, players had to figure out how to get Mario closer to the right side of the screen for this trick to work. Missed. You couldn't just run forward, since whenever you pass 112 pixels from the left side of the screen, the screen automatically starts scrolling, locking Mario at that 112 pixel position. One of the earliest methods of doing this was worked out in the mid-2000s by tool-assisted speedrunners. Tool-assisted speedruns are a little different from regular speedruns, they're not performed in real time by a human, but rather somebody goes inside an emulator and manually tells the game which buttons will be pressed on each frame from start to finish. In 2004... That's intense. You know, like, any kind of building like that is, is intense. To know what buttons to push exactly when. It, it's crazy. The way how they broke, like, fundamentally broke this level down is... It, it's, in, it's insane. Four. Mana published a tool-assisted speedrun that showed Mario clipping Boom. into the wall at the start. There's that this wall pushed jump. Mario forward exactly 20 pixels. Those 20 pixels were just enough to stop on the first pixel of the pipe, go down it, and be taken to the warp zone. Any farther than the first pixel of the pipe, and the screen would have scrolled too far, causing Mario to go into the coin cache. This wall clip, however, was essentially impossible for a human to ever pull off, which is our main focus of interest here. It required jumping in just the right way, at just the right angle, and then mashing the jump button in just the right way once you're in the wall. Kaboom. Nobody thought that these inputs could be done back then. Simply put, this method of moving to the right was completely out of the question for a human. It, it ends up happening, but like, bro, that's so insane that how they dissected the level, man. All these little things about pushing your frames forward and backwards and stuff, it's, it's crazy. But another method was found also in 2004. Michael F. posted a tool-assisted speedrun that confused the game into wrapping Mario to the other side of the screen using the vine. 
This method saved about two seconds over the standard method Holy of climbing the vine, what? and it was a humanly possible trick. However, still, real-time speedrunners didn't use it. You see, this method of vine warping was considered to be a glitch, and for many years, because of rules from websites like Twin Galaxies, glitches were discouraged and usually outright banned from humanly played speedruns. So the 2000s continued to pass, with all speedrunners playing through 4-2 by running through and climbing up the vine. But eventually, one guy had enough. That one guy was Andrew G. While he had followed the glitchless rule set for many years, by 2007, Andrew decided to ignore it. So he began to look at the options he had in 4-2. Method 1, the block clip method, wasn't humanly possible, so he quickly ruled it out. Method 2, the vine teleporting glitch, did save a couple of seconds, but Andrew wanted something better. 4-2 is such a small stage, though. Was there really anything else you could squeeze out of it? But after a while of searching, Andrew found something that would forever change the way speedrunners played 4-2. This was method 3, the easiest and fastest humanly possible strategy, the backwards bump method. Yeah, the backwards bump method, this was insane. It blew my mind the first time I ever seen it. And I was like, holy, I can't, I can't even fathom that that actually worked. Alright, like I mentioned before, Mario cannot naturally move past the 112th pixel from the left side of the screen. This is a ROM hack of Super Mario Bros that displays how many pixels you are from the left side in the upper right corner where the time usually is. See, it's locked at 112 pixels. But check this out, if you run right in front of a wall, tap left to turn around, and then jump while brushing up against the top of it, Drop. this number moves it's forward dead. quite a bit, meaning that Mario has moved forward that many pixels. You usually get Mario to move forward somewhere between 7 and 10 pixels from doing backwards bumps like this. And once again, you need it to be 20 pixels further to the right for the wrong work to work at all. And the more pixels past 20 you were, the more pixels you had to go down the pipe. Yeah, I was just if going to say If you manage to get Mario to exposition 132, you could go down the first pixel of the pipe. If you manage to get him to exposition 133, you could go down the first or second pixel, and so on. Since it was very difficult to immediately stop on the first pixel or the first few pixels, Andrew wanted to give himself some leeway with his pixel gain. So he elected to do three backwards jumps in order to guarantee somewhere between 21 and 30. It's that triple bump, man. Holy pixels of gain. Letting him like the frame perfectness that you have to get. I just imagine how your hands are going to be cramping right after that. Stop basically Playing anywhere with the claw on the claw stops. <laughs> the puzzle that Andrew G then had to figure out was where to do these three backwards jumps. Look at how long the stage itself is, you wouldn't think there's too many different combinations he could try. But some jump locations gave smaller bumps than others, some involved waiting for piranha plants to move, and some were impossible to get if you did others first. This was the first three bump method used in April 2007. One. Two. Three. Still got him up. You Notice don't how even have to down the middle of the pipe and the for the vine. still works. That's because these three bumps were able to push him far past the minimum 20 pixels needed. When he returned to the game a bit more than three years later, he had a new route. Brushing down on this section, and then the same two pipe jumps as before. But finally, a year later, in December 2011, Andrew was able to get some help from another guy, Weirwindle111, to figure out the ultimate three bump strategy. It's the first bump, second bump, third bump. All three bumps, you see that? And he was able to pop it off quick. We're Wendell 111 to figure out the ultimate three bump strategy. First bump, right here. So I know that there it ends up progressing to a second bump here, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, there there it is. Third bump. Second bump. Third bump right there. On the platform going down, that's pretty insane. It was able to get him into the pipe at a 375 instead of a 374, and ultimately ended up saving one frame rule over the previous three bump methods. Oh yeah, you might not know what a frame rule is. One frame. By one frame. Jesus. 
Because of what runners call the frame rule, you can only lose or gain time in increments of 21 frames, or approximately 0.35 seconds in Super Mario Bros. in every level other than 8-4. This is because at the end of every level, the game only checks for completion every 21 frames instead of every frame. To quote current world record holder Darbian, it's as if at the end of every level, a bus arrives every 21 frames to bring you to the next level. Even if you miss the bus by just one frame, you still have to wait 20 frames for the next one to arrive. Sometimes though, you'll arrive just before a bus comes, and you'll hardly have to wait at all. Anyway, for years, this particular three bump method was the fastest method that- So like, not only that for the timing at the end of uh, the level, if you get fireworks, it eats up some time too, right? You have to take that into consideration. So they, I think that they try not to get the fireworks, like not get uh, the most points, because it all depends on your points, right? But any runner was attempted to complete 4-2 in I could a speedrun of Super Mario Bros. But Andrew G did know of one potential faster method. If done correctly, you would go into the pipe at 376 and save a frame rule over the fastest three buff method. However, at the time, this was by far the hardest and most random method any runner had ever come up with to complete any stage in Super Mario Bros, let alone just 4-2. It would lead to years of resetting speedruns over and over again in 4-2 just to save those .35 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the two-bump method, better known as Fast 4-2. Uh, I think where you're coming across after you jump on the Goomba and there's those uh, tiles, the coins and stuff, I think that there's a double bump there. If you could like jump high enough and get the bump on the back. If you recall from before, you need to get Mario to Exposition 132 from Exposition 112 for the wrong work to work. Those 20 pixels were possible to obtain from two bumps, since you get between 7 and 10 pixels from each backwards bump. Oh, that just you do. those two, eh? So if you got 10 pixels from each one, then you can be exactly on exposition 132, stop on the first pixel of the pipe, go down it, and be taken to the warp zone. Doing only two bumps instead of three would save another frame rule over the old three bump method. Andrew figured out that the two bumps that gave you the greatest chance of getting 10 pixels each were right here. You could sort of control how many pixels you got from each bump, but not reliably. It was so precise that getting 10 pixels was essentially just luck. On average, you'd get the 20 pixels you needed, maybe one in every four tries. It's not that bad. That was just the beginning. If you happen to make it to Exposition 132, you then had to stop on the first pixel of the pipe and go down it. If you stopped even a pixel too soon, you couldn't go down the pipe. And if you're a pixel too late, you would go down to the coin cache instead of to the warp zone. Friggin' frame perfect, man. Frame perfect. Just imagine how much time you would have to spend. So one, once out of every four attempts, right how many attempts did he take overall before he was able to get it down consistently that's crazy that's Believe a lot of when time I say that doing this was ridiculously hard but doing this combined with needing 10 pixels from each of your two bumps nearly impossible and to illustrate just how difficult i'm talking about i'm going to refer to a video from a guy named patrick lemieux lemieux took a stream of hundreds of world record attempts from andrew g and overlaid them on top of each other Takes you to world four. Whenever an attempt died, Lemieux simply removed that run from the overlay. For the first three levels, hundreds of Andrew G's were tied with each other to the frame. Those same Andrew G's entered 4-2 to attempt fast 4-2. But out of all those hundreds, just one made it to the warp zone on fast 4-2 pace. Crazy. It's insane. Whenever a run happened to make it past 4 2, Andrew fell silent. The voices of a hundred Andrews that were active just a minute before now didn't say a word. These fast 4 2 attempts continued for months, and eventually years. Andrew G lost at years. least 95% of years. his speedruns that made it to 4 2 because he needed to save a third of a second. Eventually, Runners stopped trying for Fast 4-2 because other, easier time saves were found in other levels. But by 2016, the world record got back to the point where the Fast 4-2 frame rule needed to be saved for a good chance at the world record. But runners hated doing 4-2. It was stupidly hard and largely out of your control. 
Derby and Cosmic D12, Andrew G, none of these guys really wanted to do Fast 4 2 anymore. Was there anything else they could squeeze out of such a small stage? Remember before how I mentioned that Weirwindle 111 helped Andrew discover the best 3 bump method of Fast 4 2? Well, it turns out, back in 2011, Weirwindle also discovered something else. It says glitch. Oh, you see that? Hold on. He went through the box. He jumped through the box. That's what? Using a TAS, Weirwinder was able to clip partially inside of a block and get pushed forward several pixels. Runners didn't look into this trick anymore back in 2011, however, because it didn't actually push you enough pixels ahead to get the 20 pixels needed. Only about seven. So right here is where I thought the double bump was, where it's like you jump, bump, and then bump on the way down, or you do a bump and a bump. 17. And the inputs that Weirwindle was doing required pushing left and right on the controller at the same time, which wasn't possible for a human. So our runners forgot about it for a couple of years. But one day in 2016, Andrew G realized a couple of things. One, you didn't actually need to press left and right at the same time to get this to work. And two, you could just do a bump earlier to make up for the pixels you're short of 20. Oh, if you snap. did all this really quickly, you would potentially have a few more pixels to go down the pipe and still be taken to the warp zone. Unfortunately, it was really difficult to get enough pixels from this clip while still being fast enough to save the frame rule needed to match Fast 4 2. So Andrew G went back to the drawing board. That's crazy. He That's remembered insane, the old tool assisted method of clipping into the blocks at the start. His attempts at this trick from years in the past nearly universally resulted in him not clipping in. And on the extremely rare occasions when he did clip in, it was far too slow to match the Fast 4 2 frame rule. But that had been a long time ago. He had gotten a lot better at the game since then. So, he tried this method again one day in early 2017. Oh my gosh, wait. Nice. Holy crap. Finally got it. I can't believe it. About 100,000 more times. 100,000 more times. What in the world? Jesus. Holy crap! Saved so much time. Holy crap! Unbelievably, the once considered impossible task method was now humanly possible. If done correctly, it could just barely be fast enough to match the Fast 4 2 frame rule. And while Andrew G did find some immediate success with this trick, in the long run his success rate with the trick started to go down, and no other top level runner, Cosmic D12, Derbian, or Sumwest for instance, was having any notable success with it. So, 4-2 still needed some universally agreed upon fastest and best method. The block clip and wall clip methods were just a bit too inconsistent, and standard fast 4-2 was just ridiculous. They're just looking for consistency now. That's like, I could, I could understand the consistency overall for what it is that they're doing, but in order for it to work every time, seamlessly, bro, that's... They're on a speed runners are on a whole other level when it comes to gaming. It's crazy. Well, but then in 2017, the ultimate method for 4 2 was found, and it came from perhaps an unlikely source. This guy's name was XX420BlazeItXX. He noticed another blaze old assisted method of clipping into the wall a few blocks above the ground. Damn. What? The reason why speedrunners never I didn't even know about because that. clipping into a wall in this way almost entirely. What? So he jumped from like here to clip into the wall, but did he turn back? Hold on. He noticed another old tool assisted method of clipping into the wall a few blocks above the ground. The reason why speedrunners see never him, attempted to see that like he turns into his character way almost entirely. I don't know if he turned his character here though, because it kind of looks like he did a one two frame perfect kind of thing. But you see him when he ends up moving over here a little it really bit. Depends on Hold on. See, look, he's starting to flip to look this direction, and then to continue what Mario's on. Mario's subpixel is. Subpixels are values smaller than the pixel that tell your position on a very precise scale. You cannot normally control what your subpixels are, as they rapidly change as you play a level. 
so most people simply ignored this wall clip method. But not 420 Blaze it. He realized that your subpixel values are always the same when you start a level, and this wall was right at the start of the level as well. And it turned out, the subpixels you needed to clip into the wall just so happened to be the same that you started the level with. That's crazy. So, 420 Blaze it ran up to the wall without doing anything Boom. else first, right there. and jumped into it while tapping left to clip in. He did, a he did quick touch jumps, left. And boom, he was in, and pushed forward 20 or more pixels to the right. That's crazy. He usually had a few pixels of leeway to still go down the pipe. And yes, it was fast enough to match Fast 4 2. Runners were a little skeptical of this method's viability. But soon, runners like Mav6771 were showing it off in practice with great success. He could get it one in every few attempts, and slowly, other world record contenders began to implement it into their runs. They realized that this was it, a decade and a half of playing 4-2, and this method was able to send them to World 8 in the fastest time with the best- Took them a decade and a half to figure this out. Holy Jesus. It's almost like Red Dead 2, right? People are still coming out with stuff that hasn't been found in that game. Consistency. Crazy. And it That's was all nuts. thanks to a guy named 420 Blazit. Respect 420 Blazit. <laughs> Over the course of 14 years, the amount of work that speedrunners have spent on 4-2 is remarkable. Game developers designed this level over 30 years ago, and I doubt they could have imagined how many people would tear it apart. To discover every little jump, every possible region that could be exploited to save time. Every few years, something new has been discovered that makes the stage either faster and more consistent. And I doubt the journey is done quite yet. Thanks for watching. His top supporters, feel free to go uh, go and support Summoning Salts. Yeah, no, man, that blew my mind, especially that last little breakthrough. I, I had no idea about that one. I knew about the, the first three. I just didn't know about that one. That's crazy. Ended up uh, keeping pace with the actual time and stuff like that, actually being able to lower the time, too. That's crazy. Speedrunners, salute to those Mamma Jammas. But yo, that's going to be it for a React video. That's crazy. That blows my mind, man. Super Mario. We'll end up probably playing some of that uh, sometime soon on a stream. But yeah, nah, man. Thanks for uh, checking the video. I appreciate you. And take it easy. Peace.